The exercise we're about to do is what I consider one of my absolute most brilliant exercises ever designed. I want you to know when I say an exercise is brilliant, I'm not giving myself credit. These are exercises that I discovered. So I'm not bragging at all. I'm very humbled by it. But you know, um, you can hear the church bells in the background and you'll probably hear some of the um, roosters. Now I, uh, I'm very fortunate to have this place. I have a four bedroom house. Uh, I have in-laws living with me and grandkids. And so we have a family, uh, very happy, a lot of laughter, a lot of singing. Um, I have my sister-in-law living next door. She comes over with her kids. So it's a very active, wonderful family life that I have here. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get back to the States. I had a physical setback a few months ago. Now I'm uh, lucky if I can walk seven blocks. I come back from my walk, I'm in rough shape. But, so I don't know if I could make the long trip or not. But what I do know is I have a beautiful place here, a beautiful setup here, and I can share my incredible material with my friends all over the world. I used to tell people I'm shot full of demons. Demons get me. You know, a habit is a powerful thing. So a habit could be called a demon. See, a demon is something that's more powerful than you. And when I get on the eight ball, the demon would reveal itself and I would miss. Not a hard shot either, but I'd miss. I used to choke something terrible. I went through choking for a long time. And, you know, I took psychoanalysts and spiritual meditation and did all that I could do to rebuild my self-esteem. Still choked. Great player, man, you should see the run out until I got to the nine ball. But what causes us to choke or the demons that are overwhelming us is really nothing more than bad habits. Okay, we got three balls, one, two, and three. And we've got that uh, one ball set up here, and, and this is where we're gonna set our target ball up, between that diamond and between this diamond, and maybe a ball over that way. Our first job in this exercise is to shoot a 272. That is to go to the number two diamond right there with running English, go to the number seven diamond, back to the number two diamond and out to the center of the table. Now we want to make sure we're a little short so we have an angle on that one. If we go too far, then we won't be able, we'll be taking ourselves out of the, the lesson. So the lesson is going to be to shoot three 272s, connecting this number two diamond here. You know, if you go around that square and end up in the center of the table, we can classify that as perfect speed. But if you go around the square and you connect the diamonds, we can classify that as perfect stroke. So what we're going to do is going to work on perfect speed and perfect stroke. What better could you ask for? If you reinforce or strengthen perfect speed and perfect stroke, then your whole entire game is going to move up a notch. So don't uh, shy away from this exercise. Do this exercise until you succeed with it. I'm going to do it three times. I'm going to do it three times successfully. 272. While I'm doing this 272, why not work on some of the fundamentals that are so important to uh, good pocket billiards? What is the pre-shot routine? So what I do here is I pick the number uh, two diamond that I want to hit. That is my target. I see that very well. And not only do I see it, I'm connected to it. And then I feel the stroke I'm going to use. I have a um, little follow stroke that I use. It has a pop sound to it. Nice little sound. Solid, pure sound as a Q-tip goes through the cue ball. And I have uh, mastered that sound. The sound of a 272. So when I go to a pool room in a strange place, 
I deliver a 272. And when I get that sound, that feel, and what it looks like, I know it's good. But if it doesn't go around the table, then I know there's something wrong with the rails. And I have found in rooms where there are rails where you don't even want to try to play a shot. When I land on the cue ball, I look at the cue ball, I look at the Q-tip placement. Then I look up at the spot that I'm aiming at. The spot that I connected to, I am now aiming at it. I only aim when I place that Q-tip on the cue ball. You can't aim any time sooner than that. You can only aim once the Q-tip is on the cue ball. If you put the cue ball, if you put the Q-tip on the right, you got to aim differently. If you put it on the left, you got to aim differently. So you can only aim once you get the Q-tip on the cue ball. And while I'm aiming, I get in touch with the stroke I'm going to be using. And usually by the sound of the stroke, I can tell if I got there. I want you to know that on the membership site, I have a uh, pre-shot routine lesson that's worth thousands of dollars, not just $30, but thousands of dollars. Because if you master that material in the pre-shot routine lesson, your game will go up a whole level. I mean that sincerely, and it's only $30. And you'll find that in the complete game section. All right, I have a two rail here. I can't bring it out here and up here and kill the cue ball enough, so I gotta go two rails. And I'll take you two. Put it back there. Okay, um, this is the 272 where I want it to be. And that's what gives me the number two diamond over there. So I just take this line and then do a parallel shift. If I hit there, I should pick up this diamond. Now I have a one rail shape shot, which is what I really want. Now, one of the bad habits that I have is I put value to a shot. When I get down on that one, I say, man, don't mess this one up, you got good shape, you got it just the way you want it, don't mess it up. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's a bad habit. That's, that's not a normal person speaking. Why should I even warn myself to mess that up? If I'm putting all my effort on making the ball, why warn myself? But that's a bad habit. A habit that has uh, demonized me for 35 years. This gets me to that number two diamond we talked about, so I gotta do a parallel shift over here. Uh, this is right in between. This is right in between a two railer or a one railer. I don't think I've got the stroke to do the one rail right now. I'm in a game and I've been shooting for an hour or so, I might be able to kill this cue ball. So I'm going to go two rails. Okay, now that is a successful illustration of that pattern. I am almost in the middle of the table. Here's the middle of the table. I've done all three balls successfully and I'm quite happy about it. That's what I'd like you to do.